Welcome to the Community Television Board of Directors regular meeting for June 25th, 2018. Will the Secretary please call the roll? Yes. Chair Gudger. Here. Director Fisher. Here. Director Hall. Here. Director Rand. Here. Director Wade. Director Mannheim. Here. Director Laurent. Here. Director Maziarz. Here. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Ellen. Here. Thank you. Now is the point in the meeting where we have oral communications where anyone can address the board about issues not on the agenda. Seeing no one, I want to use this time to say um, a few words about a previous member and employee of community television, uh, Peter McGettigan, who recently passed away. And we recently, there was a special uh, meeting of the city council where a, a few words were said about Peter, and uh, my, my Treya wrote us up a nice little uh, statement for the board, and James Fisher delivered it, and I'd like to play that right now. I'd now like to invite up James Fisher. So I want to thank the council for allowing us this opportunity. Uh, this is a prepared document uh, from uh, our board. <clears throat> For generations of members, Peter McGettigan was the face of Santa Cruz Community TV. Uh, everywhere one looked, there he was, operating camera, both volunteer and staff shoots in the, uh, in the uh, studio and in the field, hunkered away for hours in the old tape-based linear edit bays where he was the master, and then reluctantly in front of a Mac editing in Final Cut Pro or behind the scenes at the Santa Cruz City Council meetings, bringing the proceedings to the public in their homes. Many CTV alumni, some of whom have gone on to professional careers in media, credit Peter as a mentor. Beyond how to frame a shot, he taught them the intangibles, things that aren't typically taught in classes, how to put talent at ease, how to take control of an event space, not designed for video or sound, and rearrange the entire room to guarantee a good recording. Oh, and not to mention how to find the best free food. <laughs> um, an avid local historian and always keenly aware uh, that today's activities are future history, Peter would often convince event organizers that their events simply had to be documented, even if the thought hadn't occurred to them. <laughs> Through the Davenport Oral History Project, Peter captured for posterity the memories of Santa Cruz County's North Coast residents. Known by his friends for his daring, he had always classy fashion sense. Peter was a passionate thrift store bargain hunter and would often gift his finds to deserving recipients. <laughs> he was quite fond of cooking uh, for his friends and breaking bread over a fine glass of wine. Peter's dry, witty, the reverent sense of humor uh, brought a smile or a laugh to many a face. Peter will be fondly remembered with a sense of gratitude by the many CTV members and staff whose lives he touched in, both, in ways both profound uh, and modest. Um, and I just want to add, we are all of us molded and remolded by those who have loved us. No love, no friendship can ever cross the paths of our destiny without leaving some mark upon it forever. Rest in peace, brother. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. That was punk rock. <laughs> so, um, is there any members of the crew at all that would like to say anything about the, the memory of Peter? I believe Richard is going to do that. Yeah, sorry about that. Would you come I just wrecked that shot That's to it. set up again. Uh, I'm Richard. Uh, came to community television many, many years ago and uh, met Peter, well, probably a few years after I started coming in here. And he was an impressive fellow, uh, both in attire, as was mentioned. Uh, which kind of caught my eye. I said, well, who's your haberdasher? <laughs> uh, and uh, I asked him what he was doing, you know, what he liked to do, and he you know, said that uh, different things he worked on, but I think his passion was documentary. 
and uh, that was my biggest exposure to him, uh, having the pleasure of seeing some of his finished work and a documentary that I thought was very polished, very well done, very comparable <clears throat> to work that you would see on PBS or even some of the networks who have money to spend on these things rather than requiring a person to volunteer his time and work with equipment that was available at community television, which may or may not have always been in the best condition or whatever. I don't recall him ever complaining about anything. I can't say that I was intimately friendly with him, so I didn't know that much about his life, but I knew that he was uh, an excellent example of what community television can do. And I am thankful for community television. I'm thankful for people like Peter who came in and set up a bar for some of us to try to achieve. Peter, I hardly knew you, but I do miss you. Take care wherever you are. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, thank you. I would love to chime in as well. Um, I don't usually wear ties, but um, and, and I, I, I'm pretty sure Peter gave me this tie. Uh, I was one of the recipients of his thrift store finds, mostly ties. And um, yeah, I, I, I wish I had actually written on the back of them, you know, but um, I, I think that Peter probably gave me this tie. If not this one, definitely some other ones. And um, um, I got to know him pretty well because I, mean, I, I could say that he, uh, I wouldn't be sitting here today if not for uh, Peter's um, taking me as one of his mentees. Um, he invited me to do the Santa Cruz City Council meetings with him for a few years before I moved on to um, do the, uh, you know, be the government technician for the uh, County Board of Supervisors meetings, which led to me working for the <coughs> county for now 18 years as of June 12th. Um, wow. So, uh, yeah, one thing leads to another, and if he hadn't um, reached out and given me an opportunity um, when I was just, you know, working as a volunteer mostly, and um, uh, I probably wouldn't be here today. So I'm very grateful for him uh, you know, seeing some sort of um, potential in me and, and helping me and helping to nurture that. So um, yeah, I will definitely miss him. Um, we worked together many times. We uh, broke bread a number of times. Got to sit. Got to uh, sit next to his pool with him a couple times out in the sun. Um, would always see him downtown as a lot of his friends, uh, you know, uh, the Hoffmans uh, definitely are gonna miss him. He was there almost every Friday, uh, uh, having his office hours, so to speak, uh, <laughs> in Hoffmans. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely gonna miss him. And um, I'm hoping that, you know, we can memorialize him somehow. Uh, I was, I don't know, I don't know if we could put a little, if there's a little place we could stick a small little tiny plaque on camera three or something like that, but um, whatever's, whatever's appropriate and, uh, and feas uh, feasible. But um, yeah, I'll miss you Peter and I'm, I'm very grateful for um, the influence you had in my life and, and, and I'm awed to see how much of an influence you had on so many other people in Santa Cruz. Thank you. Go ahead, I'll go ahead. Okay, good. So I remember Peter when we were still in the other building, and at that time we, we didn't have that bigger studio. We had this probably this much space that we have here. This, that room is very small, the conference room there. And he and Clay had this incredible program. Peter was doing the camera, and Clay was the host and doing all kinds of very creative uh, uh, acts almost, and and um, <clears throat> they also did preparations for comical things. So uh, we got to see that. You know, those who are just started out, we got to see how the real pro were using small spaces to make great TV. And so I will always remember that. That um, you know, no matter how small the space, you can make TV. <laughs> Well, Peter and I had all sorts of interactions at the city council and what, but I used to do KUSP radio programs, and just before the invasion of Iraq, I did a series of programs, and 
I have a military background about what goes wrong when you invade another country. Well, Peter turned out, filmed a teach-in, or video to teach-in at the university with Alan Richards and another professor. And I watched it on community TV, and I remembered it. So five years later, I asked Richard, I said, can't we get Alan Richard down here, and we'll figure out how to produce a TV program. That's when I found out producing TV programs is way more difficult than a radio program. So we kind of fudged some rules of community TV, and we produced the program. And it was very interesting. Uh, I'm wearing this tonight because this is the shirt I wore then. <laughs> and kind of an anniversary of that. I don't have my sports jacket on. Alan Richards said all these things again. We played the program, and Peter did a wonderful job. Sadly, it was too true to be true. And as a result of that program, about a month later, somebody said, why don't you try to get on the community TV board? So through a couple of steps, here I am. Oh, wow. So that was all from the Iraq wow. War to wow. here. And every once in a while, I pull out the tape of that program and watch it. And here we are all these years later, and all the you know, events that that set off are mm -hmm. still happening in our lives. So mm -hmm. Peter, by filming that, set me off, and here I sit. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Perfect. Wow. OK. I have to mention one other thing that I didn't, I didn't include in that list, but uh, Peter did for many years the um, book TV mm -hmm. program on community television. And then, of course, uh, C-SPAN, or one of, the, one of the networks, ended up doing a program called Book TV, and, and you know, he, he thought about trying to go after them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I think decided not to. He decided yeah. to be a, a big man. And let, let them have the name, but um, uh, yeah. We lot, actually in our archives have oh, a is. whole bunch of those yeah. Book TVs. Oh, nice. And yeah. so if people ever are interested, they can uh, get them through us, the, all these book TVs. Those were very interesting Excellent. Yeah. talks, yeah. Mm. Okay. Was there anyone else that would like to say anything before we close out oral communications? If not, um, I will move on. The next item is consideration of late additions to the agenda or addition and deletions to the regular agendas. Seeing none, let's move to the consent agenda. We have a lot of items on the agenda today. Uh, the minutes from the meeting in April, we did not have a May meeting. Uh, but we did have two finance committee meetings, which I believe, I mean, all the data is in the packet, and Becca will discuss finances also in her report. Um, and so the finance committee did recommend accepting those two months' reports. And I also included, you notice we have a huge packet this month the 2016 tax return, and Joe was at the meeting by phone. Telephonic. So I was effectively the acting chair in his absence, uh, but the, uh, the, the four of us on the committee approved the recommendation of, the, uh, of the accepting the tax return. Uh, are there any questions on the consent agenda? I'll move the items four through nine on the consent agenda. Um, I will second that, but I, I have one little amendment to make if it's um, agreeable to the maker of the motion. Um, I got an extra Z in my name okay. in, in the finance committee. I already have two in my last name, so I got one in my oh, first name, too. That could be my mistake, so I apologize. Stop falling asleep at the finance committee. You're going to get one Z. No, I have a feeling that might have been me, so oh, I'll okay. accept it. Right. But other than that, they looked uh, very accurate and reflective of uh, what transpired. And uh, made a motion, and yeah, I'll second it. Uh, okay. My tray has seconded. Oh, my tray has And I'd like to, to just mention one thing under this. Um, one of the things we have to do is keep pretty detailed financial records. And we've been going back now and reconcile all the records the last few years. And uh, Mel, our uh, uh, financial manager, bookkeeper, has been doing a wonderful job of pulling all the backup together. So everything is, is in order. Right. But what's amazing to me in going through, it's kind of like visiting the history of what all of the volunteers did, mm -hmm. what the board members did, what the executive directors did to get us all in the studio. It's absolutely amazing yeah. the trips Keith took to Home Depot. <laughs> I, told this to I sat down this one time and added them all up, and I keep my voice low. But uh, I just wanted to mention yeah. Mel's doing a good job, and our records are in good order. And if her daughters are watching us, go yeah. pat your mom in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect they have other things to watch. <laughs> okay, well, we have a motion and a second to accept the consent agenda. I'm going to call the vote. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Seeing none, we're going to move on to the oral report of the executive director. Thank you. So um, this is a report for June, and it's so exciting because uh, we're in very good shape. We have um, the co-working center. Um, I, if you if you read my report, it says we are um, we've been steadily in profit, in just you know income versus expenses in the co-working center for the past four months in a row, which is. Um, Really cool, but um, even cooler. Uh, Keith pointed out. I was very excited about this, and I missed the big picture. Is that um, our uh, we're coming to the end of June? That's the end of our fiscal year, and uh, we can already see that we will be in the black for this year. Excellent. So this is a good thing. Excellent. It's really good. This is you know two years ago they said wow. okay um, you'll be getting no more money for operating and you'll have to make your own, <laughs> and um, we're still here. So we're still making it happen, and um, at this point, being being here at the the in black piece really is exciting because we have a lot of room to grow. We mm -hmm. aren't doing nearly what we could do in the co-working space, so we can we can get better, and that uh, and it'll be oh. that'll be very nice. So I'm very excited about that. All our offices are rented. I couldn't even get into one this week. <laughs> 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 so like my smiley told me, no, you may not have one. <laughs> 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 And there's a lot more activity in our cafe area. It continues to, to be more exciting in there, which is very fun. Um, uh, closed captioning, which is eventually a revenue stream, uh, not just a scary report every month. Um, our beta phase is over. We actually have done it. We've done all the pieces that we need to do. It all works. We've tested it for a whole month, and it's been, it's worked. So, um, now we can pass captions on our live telecasts and repeat telecasts and our, through our on-demand player and um, also on our live stream. So they'll be, they're raw captions. They're about 95% correct when they, when they come out of, uh, to, on a live broadcast, and then we go back and fix them so that they're perfect for the on-demand and the, um, the repeat broadcasts or telecasts. So um, we're we're able to provide FCC and ADA compliant captions on all platforms. We're so excited. Excellent. That's, That's really great. cool. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Now Victor is working with uh, Matreya to kind of to get the captions into their Granica system, which we're going to piggyback on on your on Community TV's greatness. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> What's the point of being great if no one stands on your shoulder? <laughs> so, <laughs> Was that Harry Truman or something? Dick <laughs> <laughs> Einstein. Einstein. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yes, I only quote the best. So, um, so uh, we'll start to bill for that service in August. So we'll like now have a new revenue stream. So we're very excited about that. It's a really good thing. And then we'll expand it out as we find more takers for that service. Um, we this month um, we're providing 24 uh, a coverage of 24 meetings, so that's pretty intense work for all, for Victor and his team, and, and they've done a good job of it. So it, uh, it's a bumper crop of meetings, and you know it does get busy at this time of year, but that's a lot of meetings for one. That's one a day, Maybe more than one a day when you subtract out weekends. So um, our media and documentation service, we have an event book for this month and another one book for next month. So that's a good thing. We try to get like eight to 10 of them a year. So we're on track. We're a little less than we wanted to be, but the, getting these two makes a difference. And we already have one for next year. Um, we added some new furniture to the co-working space. If you came through the front door, you might have seen it. And uh, the mural is up. And um, I think that you may have seen that, but maybe not since we didn't meet in May. It looks great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it really whole, does. Yeah. It jumps right it's at right. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very fun. It looks really, yeah. really <laughs> realistic, and it makes you feel like you're in a garden. Did you We're hand out 3D some... glasses to look at? <laughs> <laughs> I started they sneezing start... just looking at it. <laughs> Well, thank you. It's fun, and we're still working to improve the kitchen, and we have some ideas. It's a little more complex in there to make that nice, but we're we're working toward it still. And uh, our, you know, we want to make sure that Armada is also comfortable and it's organized for them as well. We can't just take it over for our guys, so it's it's um, something we're being really careful to do correctly. And um, we've I uh, we're going to put a 
we hope to, we've identified a bench that we want to put outside the front door that is like, it looks like, the, you know, kind of a traditional fun park bench and it has a divider in the middle so two people can sit there and if it's a stranger you don't have to feel like they might elbow you or something and um, that way people can work outside in the summer and people have asked for an outside venue and we do have tables on the back patio but they seem to like that sun coming in their face so we're putting a nice we hope to put a bench up there we have to get an okie dokie from the landlord to bolt it to the to the to the walkway because we don't want it to disappear hmm. and then uh, we have a lot of small little um, they call them sea tables people can just pick up and take outside and they can put them up, put on their computers and work away in the sunshine if they like um, and we added a piece of equipment this month we added a wireless setup for our Sennheiser shotgun because we have um, we have a really nice boom and a Zeppelin that is for wireless so there are no cords hanging off it and you know those the, the booms are metal tubes, basically. When you have all those wires on them, they bang against it, and you kind of hear in the background, goom, 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 goom. and so, you know, not, it's not good. And um, this way, it'll be clean as a whistle. So we're very excited to have that, oh, nice. and just takes us up a little notch. It's also very rentable. Did you have a question? No, I'm just, uh, oh, so, okay. sounds great, mm -hmm. sounds excellent. Um, so under communications and advertising, we've uh, made the changes to our website that we needed, uh, that the um, agency that's working with us asked us to make so they could submit our website to Google to see if we can get the advertising grant. So that's in motion, we submitted the website, we made the changes and have submitted the website. And we've also, we're embarking on a new website project to build a fresh new, happy modern, looking website for CTV. So what we will really want to have people um, understand what uh, what we do for the community and what we offer for the community to do to do themselves. So we're, we want to kind of make that a little more obvious at um, going forward. So we want to we want to build our membership and, and that's one of the ways we can do it. So um, I'm getting a lot of um, help from from others. Keith especially is do he does the back side of it. So, um, and we have someone working on design as well, and, and we'll be looking for, we'll probably, you'll hear, we'll ask you some questions about what you think that the website ought to, ought to offer as well. And um, that's my happy report for June. Great. Excellent report. Thank you. Uh, next item is the oral report from the Volunteer Advisory Committee. That's all. all right, so I don't have a lot to report except for that after a hiatus of uh, several months, uh, we have started up again uh, doing orientations. We had our first orientation, uh, and we actually changed the, the direction of the orientations to include more, indeed, what you were just saying, that what people can do for themselves. You know, you know that we uh, have that people can use their phones for cameras and we have some equipment here that people can rent. And uh, of course we do field camera also. And so we are more emphasizing the whole aspects of both in the studio but also specifically going out there. Mm -hmm. And so we are inviting people to uh, you know, take the field camera class and possibly the VAC, the Volunteer Advisory Committee, would love it that uh, people who take the art classes, that they actually, because we get so many requests from community organizations, and uh, that, that people form like a, a group that would go out as volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and we also try organizations to understand if they get their own people trained, they can have more of their events and meetings covered. So we're working, we, we, we worked our whole orientation. Uh, we are having a um, studio camera class this Saturday, and we have a field camera class on August 6th. Um, so we, we hope to, you know, in the meantime, do another uh, orientation uh, in July and get people going again. So that is basically my report, unless you have something to add. No. There we go. Thank you. Any questions from the total there? All right. The next item we were asked to put on was a board retreat discussion. Um, our summer schedule normally is we would meet in July, and we would not meet in August, and then we would start up again in September. Uh, this year, not only have things been running 
so smoothly that we canceled our May meeting because there was nothing really to cover. Mm -hmm. um, our financial personnel will not be presenting us with end of the year results in January. So we may cancel the January, uh, sorry, July, sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. The end of fiscal year in July, we, the finance committee won't have a reason to meet because there won't be any financial results to look at in July. We may cancel this board meeting for July. So it seems like a good summer to us to continue the discussion we've had previous board meetings about possibly having a board retreat in August. Mm -hmm. So that's the current plan. Mm -hmm. I imagine that we will try and ask Matilda if we can use her room at her park. Is that? Oh, my clubhouse? Yeah. I'm sure. Unless as long as it doesn't interfere with any other right. activities. I can, I can invite people to come to my clubhouse. We've done it before. It was nice. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the other things would be, I would, I would love to hear from the board if there are any topics that we should try and cover if there are any times or dates that are better. You could let me know about dates or times. We would probably have it on a Saturday, just like we've done before, if that works for people in the latter part of August. Since we don't know the fourth Monday, we always have meetings towards the latter part of the month. Mm -hmm. um, and like I say, I would love to hear any ideas for things that we should cover. So, so could, should I should I kind of see what Saturdays are available, starting with yeah, the last that would be one? Great. Okay, good. So that would be either the 18th or the 25th. Yeah, I'll check if it's available, and we would want it probably from what nine to one. Nine to one. Okay, good. Something like that. Are you inviting a discussion now, or are you wanting us to email you with topic ideas and that kind of thing? Um, Either is fine. If you have a topic you want to let me know about now, I'd be happy to record it. Otherwise, you can email me or Rebecca and we'll, we'll work on it. Okay. I just, we had asked in the pre April board meeting that it be on the agenda, and we made a little bit of progress discussing it, but not anything definite. Mm. But I did want to bring up also that we probably won't meet in July, so in case you're thinking about, because mm -hmm. we won't have finances to look at and I, unless something comes up. It is still scheduled. Mm -hmm. I have a question in terms yeah. of just uh, you know procedural. Uh, so, so in terms of the Brown Act, if we have a retreat, you know, we have a quorum of no, the board. The retreat doesn't matter, does it? So no, how does it not fall under it the... It does fall as long under as we don't, well, it No, as long as we don't do any business. No. no well, does. just to be safe, no, we would notice the meeting and it would be open yeah. to the public. Is there yeah. any requirement that we yeah. would need? Well, that would be a problem so. because if you're going to advertise within the paper or anything like that. No, no, we don't have the paper. It would just be on our website and we'd have to put up a piece of paper at the site, right? right. Mm -hmm. That's what we did last time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what we did. Did. yeah. 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 That seemed to be adequate. I mean, if anybody asks, we'll tell them. It's on our agenda. Our right. agenda is publicly available and okay. that's what you need mm -hmm. to do. Yep. But typically we don't take any action out of there. It's more just no. discussion no. and. Yeah getting a vision for the future, for the coming year, mm -hmm. and um, is, just yeah. throwing stuff up against the wall and seeing what sticks. And... Okay. Yeah. And the only thing I'd like to just suggest, and I could email it, but I'd just throw it out, is you've been to a couple of the national conferences, and I'd be curious, a lot of people are going through the transition we did, is just to get your observations and what people are doing. We've survived, but how are others surviving in this kind of new environment they're in? That was kind of one of my, because the technology, uh, I think we've really come up to date, is what I can understand, mm -hmm. but just kind of looking forward and what some of the others are doing. And also, we're small. I mean, we're not mm -hmm. New York City or Boston. I mean, we're Well, they don't all have this. There's yeah. only 11 states that have what we have. That right. have the I just wondered The rest of them are still business as usual. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Lucky us. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them went out of business in California, a bunch yeah. of them closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I haven't been to one of these retreats, but I suppose it would be a good opportunity if, if anybody has some exciting articles or material that they'd like to share with the board they've come across in their, their reading or yeah. um, video content or um, might be nice to look at. I mean, I, I'm trying to watch more community TV and I saw the wonderful Capitola uh, library program and, and Larry's, Larry's boss on there. And, <laughs> um, but yeah, to, I don't know, it'd be nice to have some highlights, maybe uh, you know, inspire us to see some of the highlights of uh, mm -hmm. community TV. I, um, um, kind of inspire us, give us a, a mm -hmm. you know, 
greater sense of purpose. So I like that. You like that? I like that. Is there there somewhere listed what the uh, goals or mission of Community TV is so that we can sort of refresh that so we can be thinking along those lines? It's front and center on the website. (laughs) (laughs) So we should look at it before him. Well, one, one thing, too, is just in perspective, a lot of the treats in the past were how are we going to get to the point we're at now. That's yeah, right. exactly right. So that's, that's right. why I think your idea of what we do next and that is important because, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, we've done a huge amount of work, mm-hmm. everybody here in this whole room. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that's similar to what I was actually thinking about, which is, you know, we've now stabilized our organization. We had to carve away a lot of things going through that process. And assuming the trajectory we're on now, there's going to come a time in the future where we can start sort of expanding again, start thinking about what are the things that we had to let go of that we might want to think about doing more of. Mm. That to me is one of the things which kind of goes to the mission, goals of the organization that Mm -hmm. I'd be interested in talking about. You're right. The last one we had was we were in small groups talking about how you deal with the fact that we had money for facilities and equipment, but nothing else. Right, right, I remember that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a facilitator, didn't we? Not that last Not one. Not the last one. No, I, I tried to do that. I don't think we need one for this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, it's more of a holistic feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It always, we invited staff to come, and we always had a fair number of staff, but then we used to have a fair number of staff. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, any staff who wanted to come would be invited, but not required because it is a weekend at home. Yeah. Okay. Any other re- discussion about the board retreat? So, is it like a strategic planning meeting? Should I think yes. of it like that? Okay. okay, so we'll move on to the next item the oral report of the board chair. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention is that I'm working with Becca and other board members to try and put together a general newsletter that I want to send out to everyone. And the reason is is that we've had so many good things finally mm-hmm. come to fruition. It would be really a good idea to let our, uh, our long-suffering members <laughs> know how well things are going. Mm-hmm. And um, so if you have suggestions, I'm re- re- suggesting you send them to me. I know some of the... I've asked this at the Volunteer Advisory Committee meeting, and there's, uh, hopefully we'll be getting some feedback from them. Mm-hmm. And I've already talked to Becca, and we've worked on that already. So she's given me some great ideas. Uh, so you would also like to get some ideas from the board? And that's why I'm asking the board. There you go. Okay. You got my email address. So I don't have any else to particularly report. So I'll move on to the uh, board member or staff request for specific items to appear on the next agenda. Which we're thinking would be September. September. Which would probably be September. Okay. Probably a review of the retreat. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely the end of the year financial results. Yeah. 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 We will have them then. Yeah. I mean, being on camera, telling people what we... We what did. insights we gained. Okay. And then the last item before adjournment is announcements. Uh, in announcements, I wanted to thank the volunteers that made this production possible. And that would be Sherry Ross, Karen Scott, Linda Janakis, Richard Desell, Jim Russo, and Jean Kratzer. Thank you for uh, producing this show tonight. And if there are no I'll announcements, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 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 well, who has the <laughs> So he can, he can <laughs> leave and see. James has a crystal. Yeah. All right, so I will call the meeting adjourned at 6.04 p.m. And thank you. That's tonight's meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.